time. If this is your first time with us, I highly encourage that you go down and click that subscribe button in the corner and feel free to like this video if you found it helpful. This is actually the third or fourth video in this series with regards to finishing out our basement bar. And this video here is going to include resurfacing the front edge of the bar with some fake stone we got from Lowe's called Air Stone. And I'm going to show you how we're going to do that and wrap it around the corner. In addition to that, I'm also going to be making a column out of the Air Stone by wrapping an additional pillar that's here that just quite frankly looks outdated. And we were wanting to go for a different style. So to accomplish that, I have bought four boxes of the Air Stone Flat Primary Surface Stone. This is an autumn mountain color. It is picked because there's only about four or five colors you can choose, and this one was the most natural color I could find that would go with our current decor. They have several other colors. If you don't like this one, they've got some more that are more gray, as opposed to this one has some of the browns and tans in it uh, that I think will go well with the floor. In addition to these four boxes, which contain about 32 square feet worth of surface area, I also went ahead and picked up two of the corner boxes. Now these corner boxes have pieces that are specifically designed to wrap around corners, and I'm going to be using these primarily to do this column, but I'll also be using some of this as well. I'm only going to need about 27 square feet to cover and wrap around the edge of this bar. The flat pieces I bought alone cover 32 square feet, and then of course I also have the corner pieces to, to go ahead and work on that column. The total cost for four boxes, these two corner boxes, I went ahead and picked up a hacksaw because that's what we'll be using to cut most of this, and also two buckets of their adhesive and a scraper for less than $360. I plan on doing all this myself, so it should be a pretty inexpensive remodel, and let's get started. As I mentioned before in previous videos, we've done things like refinish the entire top of this, with a glaze coat epoxy that turned out real nice and we've hung some pendant lighting and I've got a video that will show you how to do that. So we've already transformed the bar quite a bit with just increasing the lighting and changing the countertops but this pole here uh, is pretty outdated. We thought about taking it out but since I'm going to be using the air stone to wrap the front of this dated wood look on this we're going to go ahead and wrap this as well and go ahead and give it a nice stone column that ties the whole thing in. Some optional tools that I may or may not be using are a sawzall, because you can cut this with a hacksaw, but if you have access to one of these, it can certainly speed up the process. Uh, I will need some scrap lumber, because I'm gonna have to uh, make this a column that's flat, because you can't wrap the square stone around this circular piece, so I'm gonna have to make that square, which will make it a little bit wider. And then I've also bought a under cabinet bar light uh, LED light kit from Costco that I'm going to be mounting up underneath the edge of the bar and that'll give a nice down light uh, onto that as well. So those are some optional things that I'm going to be putting in here that are not required. They're not included in the original uh, $360 that I paid for this from Lowe's. When we open up the boxes of this Aerostone, what you're going to find is it's packaged a little different than it used to be. It used to be wrapped in some bubble wrap on ones of these that I've done before. But they do have a note that says all cartons contain six trays and all stones in each tray are the same color. So you need to make sure that you do not just open up the box, pull off this top sheet, and start placing these directly on the wall. Because each one of these trays that's in here is a different color. And so what you'll have to do is take some of these and lay them all out on the floor and kind of mix them up yourself before you go putting them on so you make sure that you're getting an even spread. Now that I've got these all laid out, you can kind of see it may be a little bit difficult because of the lighting, but there is a, a much lighter color here. This is more of a medium color, and then they've got the darker color uh, that will all need to be mixed and mingled together instead of just doing it all across the board. It also comprised of several pieces that are some thicker pieces and some thinner pieces of different lengths. Uh, one of those thicker pieces, like that one there, uh, is the equivalent of two of these put together, so it will fit together very nice. And since these are all prefabricated, it all goes together real straight with any, not any real gaps or anything. And you can just dry fit it all together as you go, you know, starting along the bottom to follow along the floor. And if I get to underneath the edge of the bar and there's a little bit of a gap, 
across the top. It, to me, that's not that big of a deal. I can cut some small pieces and fit them in there, and I'm gonna be putting that rope light across there to shine down on this. And unless you're laying down on the ground, you know, looking up underneath the edge, you're never gonna notice. And so I wanna make sure that mine is level across the bottom. So that's why I'm gonna start on the bottom for this project. Um, let's go ahead and get this wrapped so that this is ready to go. Uh, to do that, I've just gone ahead and measured out some pieces of plywood and I've cut them. I think I've even got a piece of MDF in there somewhere. Just some scrap stuff I had laying around and I'm gonna cut it and just tack it in and screw it into this to make this a square instead of a round piece like that. And we'll make it easier to wrap it with that other part. So this outdated round pole, it makes it difficult to put these corner pieces around this if they don't have something to grip to. Now it doesn't have to be perfect. You just have to have some flat surfaces that you can put this you know, mortar on to be able to put this stuff down, this adhesive stuff on there. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and pre-cut some pieces that will work to fit around the outside edge of this. And so I've, I've already cut them just to where I can lay them up here and get them tacked in place. This particular stuff, I think I cut a little over five inches and the pieces on the side are like four and a quarter. And uh, I'm gonna get it up here just to give it something to, that I can attach on to. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of the sides as well. And I'm gonna go ahead and put a few screws in there along with this just to make sure that this holds just strong in place so that it doesn't pop off of there. And then we'll be ready to start wrapping this with the stone. I've got the three sides done. Now I just gotta put this last piece on and hide this column. If you ever want to hide a little secret note or something, that's a good spot to hide it because it's not coming out until this until this stone comes off of here. We'll just get this last one lined up. And again, these are scrap pieces. I didn't cut them exact. There's a little bit of a gap. It's not going to matter. Once these stone pieces are put on here with that underlayment and the corner pieces are put on, you're not going to see any of that anyway. So just get the rest of this one put back on and we're ready to start laying some stone. Where I've cut this back here, I've laid my first piece in. It looked like it went in there pretty good. Oh no, we've got our first problem. One of our stones broke. Well, that's okay. I've already found a couple of them broken in the box. Don't panic. You're gonna end up cutting several of these anyway, and a lot of them are look the same. So either you can go ahead and use the broken piece, or you can go ahead and hold on to it. Whenever you need a smaller piece later on, you can certainly, you know, cut it off of one of these but you will be needing to cut a lot of these pieces later. So don't, don't pay, panic and start sending this stuff back just because you got a couple of broken pieces. Look, like I can stick that one in there and nobody ever knows. So that'll be our little secret. We're gonna start out with that one right there. So I'm gonna use some of this adhesive. It's kind of like some whip topping in here. You don't need to use a lot. Each one of these buckets covers 30 square feet. So that's quite a bit because We've only got a total of about 30 square feet worth of this flat stuff as it is. So, you know, you want to use enough of it to get it on there, but you don't need to use so much that it's going to be pouring out the sides. That's probably a little much. So I need to be cutting back on some of these next ones. So I'm going to be removing, scraping that off because I got to be able to, once I get done with this first row, come back and do the next row. And I want to make sure that I don't have that buildup on there. So just use as much as you feel like you need and just learn as you go and just put a little bit on there and when I was doing this columns for work uh, it worked out really well to end up scraping it smaller around the edges like that and put more in the middle it seemed like and then just give it a push on there to hold it on there and that's all you need so it's not that big of a deal and it'll go pretty quick once you get started the, the tough part is going to be getting that uh, get in the column which we'll get to but I've kind of just laid out a few pieces to get started and kind of looked at some of the color and different sizes and we're just going to put it on here like that and make sure I scrape back my edges just put it on all right well we've gotten a couple of rows we've gone and put those together that's been going along real smooth 
kind of bricklaying some, setting some on top, setting some big ones, some small ones, some brown ones, some light ones. But I got down here to the end and realized, oh my goodness, well, our first problem. Well, we've got three different sizes, and this one's entirely too small. And that one would fit, but it would leave a gap. So it's not going to be any good. And so this one's too big. Now we're going to have to cut this. And so we're going to need to put it up here and mark it. And then, as you can see, I've opened up the... Uh, the corner boxes, which really, they're a little misleading. They are corners, but they're they're flat pieces with one edge that's rounded like that, which will allow, when this is cut, to be set up there over the end of it, that'll give it a, a corner edge, a finished corner edge look like that, which will give it a rounded edge. I was anticipating it to actually have a hooked end on the end, and that's apparently not the case. But that's okay. We can also brick lay those up and do some of the rounded corners on this edge and some on this edge and so forth as we go up. And also do the same thing around the, the edge using those others. There's going to be a lot of cuts, you know, around the end down here. But uh, for here, I just need to line this one up flat with this wall and make a mark with a pencil. And then go ahead and get the hacksaw and we'll give it a cut. So we have it marked with where I need it cut, right there. And so now we're just gonna take the hacksaw and kind of get it started. It is notable that this will obviously produce some dust. So if you're one that's really anal about that, you can put down drop cloth and so forth. We're just gonna vacuum the floor uh, when we're done. <laughs> So a couple of developments. One, it's really nice to have a pad to kneel on. And I didn't think about that the first day, but that's been a godsend for my knees or having some knee pads, especially if you're gonna be working along the ground. I think once I start working up the pole here, it should be a lot easier. Flat surface is going on super fast. These corners, <laughs> cutting the corners with that hacksaw is an enormous pain in the rear end. Can it be done? Yes. Is it going to take forever? Absolutely. Plus, you're probably going to chew through some blades. So I then tried to use the uh, Sawzall with a blade on it, but the blade was not the correct blade. Okay, so I finally broke down like I told you. Got this blade for an angle grinder. It was a four and a half inch blade for an angle grinder. It's a masonry cutting blade. Okay, game changer as far as making it go faster unbelievable yes you can do it with the hacksaw yes you can do it with the sawzall yes you can do it with all these other parts but unless you have an actual like wet saw that you can use this thing here is fantastic i'll put on some safety glasses let you show you how fast this cuts The other thing is the corner boxes does not have all corner pieces in it, surprisingly. It actually has some of these corner pieces which are got the rounded edge like that. And it has some flat pieces in there. So there's not as many of these corner pieces as I would have liked to have had. So I'm kind of making an executive decision here to make this front edge here is going to be corner pieces. And I'm going to start taking this, this column, I didn't do the whole thing, but I'm going to start taking this column and just button them up and brick laying them in like that to make it more of a square. I was going to start rounding it off, but I think I'm going to go ahead and just do a square all the way up on that. And then go ahead and use these remaining pieces and finish out the edge where it finishes off running around there. So we're going to keep working on it. Uh, again, the flat part of it, I haven't even been through the first box yet. And it's already done quite a bit and i've still got three more boxes of this flat so by using the flat to, to brick lay around that column i think is going to be a good a good way to go we'll keep working on it and see if we come up with anything else all right i finished my first bucket of stuff here i'm going to go ahead and call it for the day because this up and down on the ground even with the pad is just killing my back 
But as you can see, I've gone through uh, two boxes of the standard and one box of the corner pieces. I still have some of the standards left, little chip pieces that I've had to cut to fit in different various areas. And if, the further that you go, I will say it gets a little easier because you start building up this variety pack of little chip pieces that you can fit in so that whenever you end up coming to areas, see if I can find some of them in here. Like this isn't a natural shape that it comes with, but I had a little spot in there, so I put one in there for that. And there was another little tiny one in there. I picked that one there. It didn't come out quite even, but there's a little piece in there. So you end up piecing these little pieces in, and once you get going, you have a lot of those little extra pieces to choose from. So that's kind of nice. It makes it go a little faster. Uh, once I get around to this end here, I've started wrapping this. I've still got a few edge pieces left because, again, I'm finishing out this edge here with the edge pieces. And then uh, that other box should be enough. I've only got to get enough edge to finish this edge here and this corner. And the rest of it is all going to be the flat to finish up. And since I've got two full boxes plus some pieces, I, I may end up, I don't know, we'll see. I may end up just being able to use one more of those boxes and just kind of using it to cut the pieces and get around this pole and maybe be able to take a box back. I don't know, we'll see. But for right now, it's looking really good. I'm very happy with how it's turning out. So we'll go ahead and crack open the next box tomorrow and get started. It's coming along really well. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm going to go ahead and stop just a couple rows shy because I'm going to have to drill a hole to feed the uh, wire through for my lights. And I want to get all that taken care of before I then space around it and go ahead and run some, the remainder of this up there. But it should be another, I don't know, two, two and a half rows up to the top. I will say, if you start doing a bunch of these rows at once, if they're not quite level, you'll start to compound as you go up, especially if you're constantly working with this wet and doing it all in one day. If you're doing it like where you do a few rows one day and then wait, and then do a few rows the next day and wait, it'll dry and gives you a nice solid surface to stack on. But what I have found that works really well, and you probably can't see, is that if you do start getting some areas that are, here I get a little better in the shade here, areas that are starting to not be exactly level towards the end here, because I've been doing like six or seven of these rows just now, uh, as I've been pushing them in here, I noticed when I was running a solid block across, it wasn't sitting evenly on these. And so you just use some toothpicks and just shove them in and kind of level them out as you go. And then when it dries, you just pull the toothpicks out. And you won't notice the little tiny cracks in between. Um, so that's not a big deal. But the only other thing I can come up with right now is if you're going to be stopping at any given point, this stuff does get hard. And if you make sure you scrape off the top of whatever you're working on real good, because if you leave big globs, then it hardens and it's harder to pick that off of there later. So whenever you're done, make sure you leave a clean edge like that so that you can lay the next piece whenever you're ready. So I got to do one more piece in there. And then for today, I think I'll probably call the wall until I can get the uh, lighting figured out. And I'm going to go ahead and go over here to the column and I'm going to start wrapping the corner and getting the column at least up to there before I stop for the day. And then for my final day, I will go ahead and install the light underneath and go ahead and wrap the rest of the column up and show you the finished product. It's time for me to drill my hole so that I can feed my light through. And I've already checked the other side of this being hollow. There's a little trim piece that comes down and then I can go in right below that. So I'm gonna go kind of as close as I can get over here to the edge. There we are. I'll be able to feed that through and access that plug on the other side of that. And then once I'm done feeding, we're gonna run that line across underneath the top of this and then when I go ahead and put this rock I'll end up tucking it around that hole a little bit to leave enough room for the light cord to come out. Got the cord pulled through and I've made sure that I had enough to go all the way across to the edge of the front of my bar up there where I want to get it. Now I'm going to end up mounting this actually a little bit out so that it hangs over the outside edge of this stonework we've been doing and this particular light set uses these little clips and so since these stones are varying in thickness I think what we're going to go ahead and do is leave this coiled up on this side over here and go ahead and finish out the stonework underneath there it looks to me like it's going to take about two more rows to get it up there pretty good 
Gonna do it real quick here. Two more rows will get us about up where I need to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and do two more rows across. That should get us all the way up next to the top and then install this light, shine it down on that. And that should run us out across the rest of this front and finish it out. What do you think, Kelsey? Cool. You like the rainbow? Yeah. It's fun to watch it go through and then all the blue and yellow and green so and everything else through. comes through. Okay. I told you it was going to be about $360 because that's what we started with and that, that ended up being true. I did have to buy a $40 blade uh, for this uh, tool here. To cut this made a world of difference. I would not attempt this project without it. So if you've got an angle grinder, get one of these blades. Uh, this is a DeWalt uh, stone cutting blade, but it can be any brand stone cutting blade. It, it made it go way faster. But I recouped that $40 because I actually ended up with one extra box that I didn't end up using that I'm going to return. Uh, this is the, what's left as the scrap. Uh, there is no other waste because as you can see, I ended up using a lot of the smaller pieces throughout the bar as you go along, so you don't really end up with that much waste. Uh, the lights that we ended up putting underneath here, they can cycle through, do different colors and everything, but overall for $360, I'd say this is a fantastic upgrade to this bar. It really completes all the projects we've been working on. I hope you've been following some of them, and if you liked them, please comment below. Feel free to like and subscribe, and if there's anything else we can help you with, just leave them in the comments. Until next time.